Hi, I'm John Fakara. Welcome to Fakara Classic. I'm here with the Mercurial Mechanic Matt. Say hi, Matt. Hi, Matt. There we go. Now, we're going to continue on with my series on the Rocky Aoki Porsche 911 Twin Targa Limousine. We've torn the interior out, we've torn a whole bunch of stuff off, and there's been a lot of Bondo. So let's get right to it and show you what we've done. Well, it's a Targa again. Look at that. Isn't that awesome? Matt diligently chiseled off 4,000 pounds of Bondo from the top of this. He went and just chiseled through all of the welds and got those clean, and then we finally cut it free. So this is what it looks like as a double target, which is what it looked like back in the day. And I, I love it. I mean, this is how the car is supposed to look. This is fantastic. I don't care if that top added any structural rigidity. This is how it has to be. It's friggin' amazing. And this is the Bondo that came off just what was covering the welds. That is an impressive amount. It's got to be 10 pounds of Bondo right there. So they, they put the top on, I think, originally to like make it easier or make it look smoother. I, I have no idea why the, the second body shop did it, but we got rid of it. And let me show you, let me show you the top and you can get an idea of the levels of, of Bondo here. Look at this. You got gray Bondo, we've got pink Bondo, I mean, in different layers. It's gotta be, I don't know, one, two, three. It's like, can you tell the age of the car by the rings? Or, you know, can you tell where the dinosaurs died in this levels? Or, <laughs> the LA riots were right here. You know, it's like, <laughs> this is madness, the amount of Bondo that's on this. So, Matt chiseled all this off. He used a blowtorch. She was there with all kinds of crazy tools, hammers and chisels, and finally got it clear. Then we cut free the welds, front and rear, trying to save the front Targa, which we did, which was great. Matt did an amazing job. So we actually can put the Targa back on the front if we can figure that out. But what we think, what we came up with after we took this off is that this is probably the Targa in the photos that they built this car out of one 911E Targa. And when a car only came with one target top, so they just made a second one instead of buying it. Plus, we try to fit the stock target top, which is what this was right here, this the foldable one, uh, on the front once we remove this, and the shapes aren't quite correct. So I think whoever built this made this panel. Now, this thing weighs a ton. It's made out of steel, um, and I'm pretty sure it was used before because you can see where it had upholstery or something glued to this a long time ago. There's the pins for the front and the pins for the rear. And uh, so I'm pretty sure this was, this is what was on the car or at least what they used during the one lap. Uh, it's, it's not going back on the car. I'm, I, even if we have to remake it out of aluminum or something nicer or half the weight or figure out how to make a real Targa fit on the front, we'll get there. But. I just can't get over because if we chisel off the rest of this Bondo, you imagine how many bags we fill up. It's pretty amazing. So they were just trying to make it look smooth from the front to the rear and failed miserably. So I'm glad that's off. Let's look at other strange and unusual failures we found on the car. Here's the shifter. Now this is a later shifter. So this car's a 73, so this would be found on a 74 and on, um, which is fine. They work on both cars, but this is what the correct shifter arm should look like. You can see Baron or someone decided to go old school truck shifter on this thing. The throw on it probably would have been about a foot in each direction. So we'll take that out. Luckily we have a lot of old 911 parts laying around so we'll be able to use those to help fix this one. But that's, we're getting rid of the truck shifter. There's the e-brake. Um, I don't know what that's out of but this mechanism's really actually quite nice. We used something like this on the Kellison when we did the emergency brake on that car. And that allows two cables to run to the rear. So we'll probably reuse that. That's nice. Headlight, as some people pointed out, horrible. They're non-DOT headlights. They're probably for a motorcycle or something. And they're absolute rubbish. And they go in the rubbish bin. Um, one of my favorite things are these. Uh, anybody who's hung curtain rods before at home will recognize these. And uh, yeah, 
guess what these were doing in the car? These were holding the hard fuel line that ran from the front to the back. Which isn't, you know, not a bad idea. They're adjustable and things like that. I mean, no one's ever going to see it. But I don't think we'll be reusing those either. Um, the seats, which people in the comments, you're doing great. Uh, you pointed out that those were E30 seats, and they were. Uh, we actually have sold them to someone who's restoring an E30 that we know, and that those are being used again. But these were the seat rails for those seats made out of some wood right there. Um, but let's look at like, one of my favorite things we found. We better go down here to look at this. So this is the shift cable, right? So we've got what a Porsche part there, right? And a Porsche part there, and then a rod. Now, there would be a rod, and it would be relatively long. Um, and, you know, oh, everything's fine, everything's fine, everything's fine. And then we get here, where they welded two rods together. And I mean, like, tack welded. Hope you can get that, Matt, because it's, it's a horror show here, right? So look at the big globs of weld. And then we keep going, we keep going, we keep going. Of course, this thing is um, <laughs> 10 feet long. And we get to this. And look at this glob work. There's a rod here. There's a random rod on the outside. And then this thing's just tacked on, which leads to the other end here, where we've got another Porsche part for the linkage on the back. And it's, it's really horrible. I mean, truly. <laughs> This is, this is not even like Burning Man level welding. This is horror show welding. I don't even understand how this thing worked or functioned or anything. Um, it is a mess. It is definitely not going back in the car. But it, again, it makes, it makes me hard to believe that a, a limo company built this. Like anybody with any fabrication skills at all built this. Um, that's going in the garbage. So another little interesting bit. We the, remember the rear windows were missing. Um, so, but we took the link the the linkage and stuff out of it, and we found this in the rear door. And this is actually from a late '80s Volkswagen Jetta um, that they just mocked up and put in the door. And it's a fine lift system. Um, it's a simple cable lift system. The lift system, and you see this in a lot of cars. It's pretty simple. But what I was hoping was that. The front window, which we took out to look at, um, would fit the rear of the car. And turns out it doesn't. It's about four inches short. So 911 windows do not work in the rear. We're going to have to figure out what windows were in the back of the car. They must have been out of some car of that period. If that's out of a late 80s Jetta, I'm hoping those are late 80s w Jetta windows or front windows from a coupe or something. I don't know. Some Volkswagen that fit in the rear. What that's going to take is literally going to a junkyard and buying some windows and going back there and see if they fit. Uh, making windows is a huge expensive pain in the butt. So I'd rather find out what they used. But at least we know when they built it. It was built before 1991, probably in the late 80s. So we'll look for late 80s car windows and see how far we can get with that. But the, the shape and size is going to have to be very specific so that the rear target seals. So fingers crossed on that. Now, another great comment people made, and this was spot on, and I didn't catch immediately. Obviously, I should have. This hood is what's called a short hood. The early cars, which what this was originally, a 73, were long hood cars, and they have a slightly longer hood. The hood comes out and curves down because the bumper was a very simple bumper that was out front, and it would curve down and meet the bumper. It was really exceptionally pretty. So you'll hear the 73 and early cars called long hoods. Afterwards, 74, after what are called the G-body cars, they were the short hoods. This is a short hood. And this is a short hood front clip that they welded onto the front of it. So I'm thinking that this was required, which I'm pretty sure now was required for the 959 kit because the 959 kit came up to here. It all fits perfectly together. So it's pointing in the direction that they welded on a 74 liter front end in order to fit the hood, in order to fit the body kit. Now, unfortunately, they didn't do a whole lot of really good sealing in here or painting or anything else. So this is where the weather strip goes on a Porsche right here. And this is all rotted out. And you can see what's left some Bondo that Matt chipped away to get the front end off. Um, and this is ruined. Now, we've got two choices here. One is, is to replace this entire panel and just, you know, 
be done with it. Or this is savable, really, and just fabricate that little piece there. But um, it's curved, it's compound, getting it off. It might be actually faster just to replace that panel. So we're going to see about that. We have removed the front suspension to take a look at the bottom panels, which we're going to definitely cut out. And that's right here. And for you, I've never seen a 911, early 911 front suspension. It's insanely simple. So this just bolts to the pan in the front, and this bolts to the back there. And you've got the A-arm going up and down there. And inside of this is a torsion bar. And that's the spring for a 911 is that you can adjust the torsion bar rigidity in the back and you can you know, kind of lift and lower the car a little bit by adjusting the torsion bar. There's no spring. You just have the shock, the strut tower kind of standing up above it. And that's it. It's very simple, lightweight, and for the weight of the car, which remember these cars were only a couple thousand pounds to begin with, was a great system. Now the car is heftier and longer. I'm hoping that it withstands it. We might have to go to bigger torsion bars. We'll figure that out later. But I thought that'd be cool. Because a lot of people don't know about the torsion bars, front and rear, of the early 911s. All right. Well, let's hop inside the car now and see what we found inside now that we've got it completely gutted. And, of course, there were some surprises when we removed all the furniture inside. So now it's clean front to rear. It's completely empty. And we took off... The panel, so you come around here, Matt. There was a panel here, steel panel, and we wanted to see what was behind it because, you know, I need to know what's behind it. So we cut off that panel. Matt did a great job. Just cut around the seam so we can, you know, take a look. And here's the hot mess behind it. We have a bar going across here, which is not straight. It's not welded in top and bottom. I don't understand that at all. We got some flat steel here. We got some you know, box steel, different sizes here. We got some more flat steel here. There's like a, still a piece of uh, welding rod there. Um, the only structural part of this really is this tiny little triangle. Now, if you've ever seen kind of cool old railroad bridges, they all work with these triangles. That's how you make strength. This is the only strength here really that we found is this tiny little triangle. So from here to here, it is rigid right here. That's, that's a good solid part of the car right there. Rest of it, unknown. So the recommendation by a couple of, of engineer friends of mine is that we run two roll bars in here, one here and then one here, and then box them together that way. And then we then run some crosses through here to give the center of the car some stability. Um, then we have to figure out how to send that stability for and aft but we'll get there. So now that this is removed, I think we can put those bars in. We'll mock that up and uh, then we'll maybe probably maybe seal them back in again to kind of make it look, you know, seamless, which would be kind of cool. Now we look down, we took all the padding off the floor and here's, here's the crappy floor. You can see the deflection of the floor, right? It's, there's no support here. This thing is just hanging. It's just tacked in of whatever this is, it's an old truck bed, it's a side of, some, side of somebody's shed or whatever, but it's just tack welded all the way around. It's not pretty, it's not well done. Uh, again, you know, if I have a hard time believing a limo company built this or anybody who knew how to fabricate, this is more of a hack job body shop kind of look. Uh, now we've had some great comments and people who have observed this car back in the day Ultra Limousine was like the hot limousine company down in LA back in the day. They built all kinds of crazy stuff, like the world's longest limousine. And the limousines made of all kinds of crazy cars and Maseratis and things like that. And this car was actually seen there, we believe, in their parking lot. There's one photograph of it. Whether or not they built it, we don't know. Because we also know that it was definitely sponsored by Sunrise Auto Body, which name was right across the side of the car for the One Lap of America. And some people have told me that Sunrise Auto Body built it. So, I need like a first-hand account or some photographs of it being built. If anybody knows anybody down in LA from back in the day, I'd appreciate it. Because that's how you do historical research. You just can't take hearsay or one photograph. You gotta get specific evidence. And that's, I mean, that's the stuff I really like, right? So we'll figure out who built this, but evidence of the bill quality, God, I hope it wasn't a limo shop because if this is what Ultra Limousine built, I don't even want to look at anything else that they've constructed. Um, but if it was a, 
you know, a LA body shop that just hacked it together, I can believe that the way this is built. So it's just, the welding's not great. The sills aren't too bad. Um, we looked inside, there was a hole in one of them, so we ran a scope inside. And the sills are actually it's pretty good steel. Um, they're pretty straight, they're pretty structural. It acts, acts as like a tube, essentially, on either side. And what the car is really missing is the center tunnel. They never put it back in. You can see up front that the 911, stock 911, has a tunnel in it. And what that tunnel does is acts as a structural beam down the center of the car. It supports the floor. And then they also had ones that went out to the side where the seats were that connected the whole thing together. So what we'll definitely do that is we're gonna take this floor out, get some better steel, we'll roll it ourselves, we'll make it look more like a Porsche floor. We'll, instead of just laying it on top of the floor and tacking it, we are going to seam weld it all the way around so it'll be super tight. And then we will build a tunnel going down the center and then we'll run out longitudinals that'll go out this way and tie all the floor together. So the floor will be very structural. The two sides will be connected. We'll have a roll bar in here it'll definitely tighten up the center of the car. Um, what we got going on front to back, I'm not sure yet. We did have some people suggest, and I really liked these suggestions, because I don't like the idea of putting a roll cage in here and ruining the kind of Targa look. Uh, one suggestion was running the, a bar down the center to give it some you know, structure front to back and uh, make it more like a T-top. I, I don't know, that's not a bad idea. Another one was that you can make those bars removable so when we run around and like go to a show, we could take those out so that they're not bugging people. But if we do a cannonball, at least there's some connectivity in the car. It wouldn't help it torsionally at all. But I don't know how structural we're gonna go with this. Again, we're gonna cannonball it, I hope. Uh, we're not gonna brace it on a racetrack. So I do wanna make sure it's safe. So again, Still working on the engineering, still working on the ideas, uh, still have to have a few more people come up and look at it. But it's not hopeless, it's not horrible. I think really we'll just replace this floor panel and build off of what's already here and take out some of the goofiness. Oh, Matt, can you get this? <laughs> this is one of my favorites. Um, I don't know if you can swing around. Can you see the nut there? Did you get that? Is that? You see it? Or is that okay? No. They didn't get the bar to reach all the way to the front. And instead of cutting a new bar, they just stuck a nut in the hole and welded it together. Um, and uh, it's, it's, just, it's just stupid. Again, any fabricator worth his salt would be embarrassed by all of this. Um, it's fixable, but my God, I don't know. Maybe they were on the cocaine too. Who knows? Um, but we can save it. Woo! Now, I wanted to show you the, this piece here. Matt did a great job of taking all the Bondo off of this top piece, cleaning off the paint, because this is a stainless steel panel. This is what the car had when it was new. When you look in the photographs, it actually would be a really cool feature if this was polished. Unfortunately, underneath the Bondo, looks like somebody went bonkers with a ball peen hammer maybe rocky got angry and just started smashing on something i don't know but they kind of ruined this panel we can't hide this under with filler because i want a polished piece of stainless steel so we might have to peel this off and start over with a new piece of stainless which uh which it's not it's not rocket science we can do that but i wish we could have saved this piece it would have been nice but i'm definitely going to do the polished stainless center because i think that looks really cool all right, now, where did the interior of the car, what happened to that? Well, let me show you. Here it is, and guess what it's made out of? Street signs. All street signs. Baron, you naughty, naughty boy. Um, these are all the interior panels that we took off, and Somewhere in LA, there's uh, some missing street signs. I mean, he did carpet it, that's nice. Um, but all of this, just street sign after street sign. And uh, granted, this aluminum is actually really good aluminum. And it lasts forever. And you can ask any Lemons team, because we build a lot of our cars out of this kind of stuff. But uh, maybe I'm giving away the Baron's a felon. <laughs> I don't know if this is going to be evidence or not. But 
none of this is going back in the car, unfortunately. Uh, well, some of it we might put in just you know, to pay, pay honor to Baron and his work. This is the center console he built. More street signs. Uh, little panel here for to get to the emergency brake, and this kind of nice little feature. We'll definitely put some of Baron's work back in the car as much as we can, because I think it's lovely, and I, 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 I love his, his art. So if we can put some of that back in, we'll totally do that. But for the most part, a lot of this is not going back in as far as the plan is right now. Now we got a long way to go before there's an interior in the car. Before we get to the interior, we're gonna need to talk about an engine again. Um, now a lot of people have made some great comments and please continue to do so about what engine to use. A lot of people are voting for the LS. A lot of people are voting to put a Porsche motor back here. Um, there's a lot of options and uh, well, a few people may have observed all the 928s and know the story with that. They're like, well, you must have an extra 928 motor. I do, and believe me, I thought about it and actually researched it, and no one's ever done it. There's a reason for that. Here, come here, Matt. And I, I'll show you on the Pasha car. We've got the top of the engine off on the Pasha car. Uh, and yes, I do owe you a video about what's going on with these 928s, and I will get that to you. Um, but you can see here, if you've ever seen a 928 engine naked, that's what it looks like. And you can see how wide it is. It's, it's over 32 inches wide. Um, it's, it's over two feet long. Uh, it's a big motor and yeah, it doesn't fit back there unless we did something severe and I don't want to go through that kind of hassle as much as it would be cool. 928 engines, I, I like them. I like them. The, the later engines, the, the 32 valves are even cooler, but they're heavy and complex and it wouldn't make much sense putting in the back. LS makes a whole lot of sense, which is the reason the LS swap a lot of 928s, because the engines, I think the LS engines are like 140 pounds lighter than these things are. So, you know, I'd love to do it. A Cayenne motor was brought up, a V8. Again, big, heavy V8. LS makes more sense. Um, and uh, one friend came up with the idea, and I think this actually is pretty cool, is there is a kit to put in the Volkswagen VR6 motor. Now, the Porsche Cayenne V6 is the VR6 motor, just with Porsche stuff all over it. So it looked like a Porsche engine. Technically, it's out of a Porsche. I get one out of a Cayenne. The V6, and they have turbo versions of that. Might be kind of cool. I mean, it sure it would fit lengthways. It probably is a tidy little motor. I gotta get some measurements. That's not a bad idea. I'm still open to ideas. What I'm gonna do is put a pull up on my Instagram, at Fakara Classic, with a list of engines, and you can vote for what engine you think should go in the back of this, because I need to find it. And again, anybody's got you know a spare 964 turbo engine laying around, Singer or somebody, anybody out there, totally open for that, because I that's my ideal motor. That's what I'd love to put in here, is like a twin turbo Porsche motor. But we'll see. We got a lot, long, long, long way to go before we get there. Um, now, for those of you who have stuck with me uh, so far in the video and you've actually watched the whole thing, uh, you're probably wondering why the black goatee? Well, we've got a sponsor just for men, for when you want people to know you're going through a midlife crisis. No, I'm, I'm, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> I'm in a production, a play production of Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross. If you know the movie, I'm playing the Al Pacino role of Ricky Roma. So don't get so close, Matt. <laughs> it's actually starting to grow out already. You can see some of the gray coming back in. So this will be around for about another month because the show runs through March. If you're in Nevada City area, please come and see the show. But that's what this is. I'm not going through a midlife crisis that I know of. Matt, too close. <laughs> so anyway... That's it for the car for now. We'll see how it goes. Stick with me. We'll do more videos. I promise we will do a video on the 928, tell you what's going on with that. And I've got a history video in the works that you're going to like a lot. Go to the merch store. There's a link in the description below to help support what we're doing here. Please like and subscribe. Tell your friends. Thank you. And have a great day.